Hey everybody, it's Jean, and I'm here with another mixed media piece that was a lot of fun to do, and uh, it took a couple days because I like to let it dry uh, the background first before I continue with it. And here I'm choosing my colors, and I'm just I just grabbed. Um, I, re I really didn't even have an idea what I was going to do. So I thought, well, I'll just put some colors together and we'll just see what happens. And I think this is the most fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And I love that orange. I'm just about done with that orange. The blue is kind of a namby-pamby blue. Um, but um, I just kind of felt orangey and yellow and um, kind of... Um, uh, well, I can't even say what what kind of colors those. They're not really fall colors with the blue. I think the blue kind of brings them into January. <laughs> A little bit, anyway. Uh, I didn't shake up the white, and when I squirted it out, I got all the yucky liquid without any of the pigment. So um, I had to shake it up and um, do that again. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how it goes. And I always leave all that stuff in because that's what happens to everybody. Um, well, maybe not everybody, but mm, a lot of us, you know, we just, just barrel through and barrel in and start doing things without thinking it through. And... Um, then we have to go back and and uh, figure out what we're going to do with it. I wanted it to be a little more textured. The last one I did, I scraped away a lot of the paint. Or I didn't put too much paint on and scraped it really thin to cover everything. This time I have a lot of paint. And um, I'm going to try not to muddy it up too badly. So... Um, um, I'm kind of gingerly uh, mixing it up and I knew the, the blue and yellow was going to make green so forget what I said about January it's definitely your more fallish colors <laughs> but it, it worked in the end and that's what that's what counts. I actually liked um, how this looked. I was pretty pleased with um, with this, and it was very fun to do. Uh, there was lots of paint here to play with, and I wanted to uh, give it some texture, some movement, and. Um, and like I said, I didn't want to muddy it up too badly. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely blended, and there's some muddiness. But overall, I was pretty happy with, uh, with how it came out. Um, I did this uh, late at night, and so... Um, so after I got all the paint on, I just decided to leave it to dry overnight because it was very thick, almost like oil paints. And I thought, I want to give it a good amount of time to dry. So, so I left it to sit overnight for the full, um, oh, 12, 15 hours. But then I didn't get to it the next day. <laughs> I, was, I, I was out. Uh, all afternoon and being outdoors all afternoon. I mean, I was out from noon till uh, around 5.30, so outside. So I just was exhausted and decided, um, no, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to do anything until I feel more ready. I was just overly tired. I ended up having an early night and so um, so I finished it up today. 
Now, um, when it dried, it had a little more of a dullish finish. Uh, and I, I, you needed, I needed a little more, um, a little more work with it. So I decided to do some, um, uh, I, well, I, because it was mixed media, I wanted to do some stenciling. Now, I think in hindsight, I might have been better to use the smaller bubbles, bubble wrap. But this turned out, this turned out fine. Uh, it is kind of a bold piece, and my focal point for this piece that I had chosen was going to cover up most of the background anyway. So I was I was pretty okay with the uh, with the wider um, bubble wrap. Now I took a, a new pen that I had gotten and I put some dots on here. It's green, and the dots really didn't show up really well but from a distance. But when you look at it closely, you see those green dots. They, they do come in. Now you can see how the focal point there um, really takes up most of the, most of the background. So um, uh, so I wanted to put a little more maybe around the edges. And I didn't add more paint. I just wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So there, so it's just a just a little extra bits, and so I just kind of touched it up here and there, and uh, gave it some of the lighter white background. Um, I'm just testing it out there in the middle because I knew that was going to be covered up. So now we're going to turn it this way and back again. <laughs> I'm doing my voiceover. I, I'm not a real big fan of voiceovers. Um, I'd rather talk while I work, except that I, um, I find it best when I'm working in mixed media to um, to just work um, without talking because I need to think about what I'm doing. Now, when I'm gluing and working in glue books and and um, doing collage and things like that, I can chat away because I'm not really. Um, I'm creating, but I'm not, I'm creating in a different way. It's like a different mindset for me. So anyway, um, I wanted to put um, some splatters on here. And I mixed the orange with, I didn't want a real bright orange. So I just used my paint water to mix, um, mix it thin. And it gave it more of a burnished orange um color and it was just right it was just right the splatters are there but they're not the first thing you see but it um there i'll show you some up here close up in a little bit but uh yeah and then i dropped <laughs> some there and i thought well i'll just go ahead and smear it around a little bit and um uh, because, like I say, I knew that part was going to um, be covered up. So, anyway, here I am. Dry, 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 dry. Get that out. And you can see there the, uh, the orange splatters uh, do blend in really nicely. And they're not too garish. And they're not too, um, too, uh, too much of a, of a feature. They're just little splatters for... Uh, some extra texture there. So, um, getting that good and dry. So, now I'm ready for my focal point. 
and it was a shiny book jacket cover that I cut out so I really wanted to dull it down a little bit and I'm using um, the distressed ink and it's it's giving it a little bit of a duller finish and but not as much as I wanted so I kept working on it working on it and I ended up tearing it and that's always frustrating and I ended up tearing it right off but no worries when you glue it down it seamless and it glued back just perfectly since I didn't have another one um, I was committed to using that one and I had almost thought about um, when I was picking this I thought about using her as an individual but I liked well I was checking first to make sure that that would go back on there or without any gaps um, so anyway, um, now with this, with this glue, I use the really, really, really strong glue because it's a thicker, um, paper because it's a book jacket and, um, it's also going over, um, textured paint. So I wanted it to stay really, really well. So I use my extra, extra strong glue and I didn't use any of the wet glue because I didn't want it to wrinkle. So now I'm going to glue the head on and let's see if we can get that seamless look. And yep, can't even see can't even see the crack there. So, and the all of the shininess of the paper didn't go away, but enough of it did, and um, in the end, I will um, give it a finishing spray so that the whole piece will have a bit of a shine to it. But, um, right now I'm just working on pulling it together so I'm really happy with how that looks I love the colors together and uh, so now I want to give it some depth oh goodness now um, I've I've got my angel from Mary hanging on my camera stand so that I can enjoy it and <laughs> I see it's floating into the picture sometimes so if you see that that's what it is. It's my um, it's my angel floating above. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm I got my Stabilo pencil and I'm gonna give it some um, some depth. I'm going to blend it in here a little bit, and this takes this takes a little bit of work to get it to look right to get it to be. Um, exactly how I want it so uh, so I'm going to play with it a little bit um, I'm going to rub it in um, blend it blend it and uh, get that that dark edging so that just just takes some time you just have to play with it until it's um, until it's how you like it but it really makes a big difference in the finished look of it to have that um, have that depth so we'll just um, speed this up a little bit and put a little music here Well, I don't know, actually. I'm kind of thinking I might let it 
roll as it is so that you can kind of see the process. Um, sometimes when you speed it up, it's just... Uh, Um, it's too quick and you don't really see um, how it uh, how it blends I really love um, how a stabilo works it's um it's a great pencil for mixed media so just going around all those little edges and I just go over it over and over until um, till I'm happy with, with how it looks. Sometimes I rub it all away and then I just go back and put in a little bit more. And um, using the uh, wet paintbrush also um, I think works a little bit better. I think there's a little more control with the wet paintbrush. And I did want to define her hat a little bit better. So now it's just a matter of um, um, working it and working it until I'm happy. And, um, you know, getting uh, all the edges defined away from the background. You have to bring it forward a little bit. Uh, when you put that shadowing in, it brings the focal piece just a little bit forward and kind of comes off the page a little bit. Now, you want to be sure and get in to where it's cut out and uh, make sure you define all of it. Now over here in this part, I thought that little piece was the hand of the uh, person behind her, the doll behind her, but it wasn't. It, um, I'm not sure what that was, and I should have cut that out for the background to show through. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of darkening it up and trying to blend the whole thing back into the background. And, um, it won't be quite as as um, noticeable. And if I look at it uh, better, uh, more, I might add a little bit of the the green um, also, just to make sure that it looks more like background and not like it's not been cut out. Then over here, um, I think it's a little bit um, too light. So I'm going to blend that in um, a little bit more so that um, it doesn't stand out as much. There's a lot of little tweaking and things to do here when you, uh, when you put your, your focal piece on. So, um, so it's just a, it's just a lot of play, and like I say, I could have uh, been I could have 
made this a little faster and put double time and, and all that, but I kind of uh, thought if you're new at this kind of mixed media work, uh, you might like to see just um, just how how it was done in real time instead of just going going really fast. I wanted to put a little bit more back there and wipe away that line. And I don't like it so much on the um, the hat. I want it to stay behind the hat. Yeah. So this, to me, this is the really fun part, and um, I just, I just really enjoy um, doing these little finer things, <clears throat> tweaking it just a little bit. See now that defines the hat just even a little bit more there. Um, I didn't want to lose that. Well, I'm getting happier with it and feeling like I'm coming to a close. So I've added the sentiment and uh, it kind of hit it a little bit, but I'm going to outline it uh, with the Stabilo just to give it a little more definition because it's a small one. I don't love dividing the words. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I, most times I don't. I like, um, I like it all in one phrase. So, uh, that's how I do it. And I think that's enough. Otherwise, I think it's busy. It seems to be too busy to me or draws too much attention to it. I just like it to be almost like a title more rather than a cluster of words. Then um, I put a little bit of edging on it uh, with my Stabilo and um, I'm going to take a paintbrush now and darken that in and smooth it and make the lines um, less distinct. Just give it a nice little border. And I'm pretty happy with it. So, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> I want to comment. Bye-bye now.